Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on how to take a Red Hat remote exam. Step 1. Schedule your exam. First, sign in with your Red Hat ID you purchased your exam with. Then, navigate to the account details and ensure your first and last name match those that are on your government-issued ID. Let's schedule our exam. Navigate to the exam scheduler and find the exam you wish to take. Click it. If applicable to your country, upload an image of your government-issued ID. Then click Schedule. Choose your country, then click Continue. Your exam needs to be scheduled at least 24 hours in advance. Simply click on an available time, input your phone number. If you have a certification ID, add that here. Agree to the terms and conditions, and then click Reserve to schedule the exam. Step 2. Ready your workspace. A few days before you take your exam, select a space in your home that is quiet and free of distractions. You'll need a computer with at least 4 gigabytes of RAM and 4 gigabytes of available hard drive space. Red Hat supports many Intel compatible x86 64 bit architectures. Whether it's your laptop's built in display or an external monitor, you can use only one active display during your exam. You'll need a USB 2.0 or 3.0 drive with at least 8 gigabytes of storage. You can't use wireless mice and keyboards, but you can use wired ones. If you need additional USB ports, you can also make use of one wired USB hub. If you choose to connect an external monitor to your laptop, the laptop's lid must be closed throughout the duration of the exam and will necessitate the use of a wired keyboard and mouse. You will need an external webcam with at least a one meter long cable. At various times, your proctor will have you position your camera in various ways so you can be monitored while you take your exam. Ensure your desk has enough space to fit your external camera. While we're working on our camera placement, this is also a good time to double check that our government issue ID is easily readable on camera. Please note that your proctor will also need to see the back of your computer. So if you're using a desktop, we recommend placing it on top of your desk to make this easier to accomplish. Your setup will also need a microphone. Most laptops and webcams have these built in. However, you can also use an external USB microphone if you choose. As far as your home network is concerned, we recommend a wired internet connection with download speeds of at least one megabyte per second and upload speeds of at least two megabytes per second. It's also preferable that your firewalls are set to allow normal web activities. In order to mitigate any power related issues, we recommend using an uninterrupted power supply in order to maintain power and internet connectivity if an outage were to occur. If you're using a laptop, make sure that your laptop's power is at full and that you're connected to a power outlet. Step three, create a remote exam bootable live USB. There are two methods to create the live testing environment. Method one uses the Fedora Media Writer, which we recommend for Windows as well as Fedora operating systems. The other method uses the terminal in the DD command, which we recommend for Linux as well as for Mac OS X. No matter what system you're running, the first step is to download the Getting Ready for Your Red Hat Exam PDF, which can be found on either redhat.com or the Red Hat Learning Community. You'll see here in the PDF that there are instructions for various operating systems. I will demo both of these methods using Fedora. The first step is to download the Remote Exam Bootable Live USB ISO. Simply click the link. I'll save that to my Downloads folder. At this point, let's insert our thumb drive. Just make sure that any files that you might need on this drive are backed up, as this process will completely erase the drive. Next, we'll open up the software utility, and we'll search for Fedora Media Writer. Click Install. And once that's finished, click Launch. The Fedora Media Writer will open. Click Custom Image. Navigate to the Downloads folder and select the ISO we just downloaded. Double check that we're going to be writing this to the correct USB drive. And when you're ready, click Write to Disk. Just be patient. This process can take a few minutes based on the speed of your computer and the speed of the thumb drive you're using. Okay, great, we're finished. Next, let's take a look at the other method using the DD command. The first step here is to insert your USB drive. And again, make sure that any files that you might need are backed up. This process will delete your entire drive. Okay, let's open up the terminal. Let's run the lsblk command. Here we can find the device name of our USB drive. Mine is named sdb. And as you can see here, it's 14.8 gigabytes in size. Okay, next we're going to run the command sudo dd if equals, and then the location of our ISO that we downloaded. Mine is in home, my username, downloads, and then the name of my ISO, rhrexboot.iso. And we'll finish this off with equals dev slash sdb bs equals 512k. Hit enter. 
Just know that this process can take a bit of time, around 15 to 20 minutes to complete based on the speed of your system. So just be patient. Now that that's completed, we can move on to booting our system into the live USB environment. Step four, booting into the remote exam live USB image. These steps will vary depending upon your system's manufacturer, but the basic process is reboot your computer and then interrupt the boot process, usually by pressing the enter key. But it, again, it can vary based on your computer. Select your live USB as a startup device. And when you see the Start Red Hat Remote Exam screen, you'll know you're almost there. Once everything's started up, we need to make sure our settings are good to go. Let's make sure we've selected wired for our network connection. And that our audio, mouse, and region settings are correct. After making any changes, just click the X in the top right hand corner. Step five, exam onboarding and compatibility checks. It's now time to start the onboarding process. Log in again with the same Red Hat account you used to schedule your exam with. If you find yourself needing help or have any questions, you can click the chat button to speak with someone from exam support. Next, let's run the compatibility check. You should run this check a few times before your exam starts. Remember, networking and internet speeds can vary and change throughout the day, so the more testing you're able to do, the better. The first test is a live USB compatibility check. When that's finished, click Next. On this page, select your time zone and then click Accept. Next are some network compatibility checks. When those are finished, click Next. Here we have some hardware compatibility checks. When those are finished, click Next. Next up, we have some streaming video checks. When these are all finished, click Next. Finally, we can see the compatibility check summary. If everything's green, click Accept. However, if any of these tests have failed, you must take whatever steps you need to take in order to get them to be green before your exam starts. Your system must pass all of these checks in order to take the exam. Also, remember to run this check multiple times before your exam to ensure maximum compatibility. Step six, taking your exam. Your remote exam becomes active about 30 minutes before your exam is scheduled to begin. To get started, click Accessing Upcoming Exams. If your exam is ready, click Access. Read the text on screen and then click Continue. Here, read about the exam environment, and when you're finished, click Continue. Next up, read the privacy and confidentiality agreement, and when you're finished, click Continue. Here we have the Employment Consent and Training Survey. Once you finish filling it out, click Continue. Next, click the chat button in the bottom right. You will be greeted by your proctor here. In case you're disconnected from the exam, they will ask for your phone number. They will confirm that your compatibility test was a success. They will also check that your external camera is turned on, and then will direct you as to how to best place your external camera for the rest of the exam. They will then ask you to verify your government-issued ID, and will then walk you through a series of guidelines. They'll ask you to show your hands, and to perform a check of your area for any prohibited items. You're allowed to have food and drinks. For every completed hour of the exam, you're allowed a 10-minute restroom break. To request that break, click the break button in the chat room window. You cannot have any connected devices like phones or tablets around you during the exam, as well as pens, pencils, or any other items. The proctor will ask you to perform a 360 degree room scan with your external camera, including under the desk and behind your computer. If you need to reposition your laptop during the exam, you'll have to perform another room scan. The exam's timer will continue to run during this procedure. Also, note that at times your proctor will perform random checks to make sure your environment is still clear. And finally, when these procedures are all complete, you can begin your exam. Good luck. Step seven, post exam. After you finish your exam, your proctor will message you. They'll let you know when it's safe for you to shut your machine down and when you can expect your results. By following these steps, you can feel confident going into your exam with all of these logistics and system requirements validated ahead of time. If you need help getting ready for your exam, please check out the Ways to Test page, as well as our frequently asked questions on remote exams for more information. Thank